Welcome to the Sales Podcast, Session 62. Let LinkedIn sink in again. Welcome to the 62nd edition of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. And today we've got Canada's top LinkedIn expert, Melanie Dodaro on to share her words of wisdom, and I'm bringing a little more focus on LinkedIn for a reason, uh, and it's because in a B2B environment, uh, I think it's the best social media network going today, uh, especially for uh, salespeople, entrepreneurs, if you if you have a small budget, if you're not sure how to work, Facebook ads, uh, Twitter lead generation cards, things like that. Uh, you can do old school uh, person to person networking and prospecting through LinkedIn uh, and make sales. Uh, so I wanted to have Melanie on. She just came out with a new book. And I think you'll find the information she shares in uh, this interview uh, quite uh, helpful and beneficial to help you make money. Uh, today's joke has nothing to do with Melanie or Canada or social media, but I did read the uh, this comic on social media, so it's kind of not related, but there was a, a comic, a picture of a woman, and uh, she had woken up. She said, I changed the name of my bathroom from John to Jim. That way, when I post online that the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is go to the gym, it sounds much better. So you might want to try that. I thought that was pretty good. So let's jump in to the sales podcast, Creed. Today is my day. I work diligently towards my goals, which are bigger than me. I bite off more than I can chew because only then will I truly know my current limits and surpassing them becomes my new goal for today. Through education, accountability partners, and bold, decisive action, today will be better than yesterday and tomorrow will be better yet. I'm ready to produce. Uh, if you have a moment to produce a recommendation for me, please visit the saleswhisperer.com forward slash love and share the love of this podcast because you will love what our guest Melanie Dodaro has to share with us starting right now. Actually starting right after this announcement, uh, somewhere around the 12 minute mark, uh, something happened with the recording. My microphone got a little bit staticky. Fortunately, I don't talk too much in these uh, as I interview my guests, um, but uh, we did correct it. So if you know it's a little bit of static, it's only for a short minute or so. Uh, and then we get right back into a very crystal clear expert audio. So I just wanted to give you that warning. And now here's Melanie. Melanie of Top Dog Social Media and the LinkedIn Code. Welcome to the Sales Podcast. How the heck are you? I'm great, Wes. How about you? I'm good. Or is it thawing out yet in Canada? It's beautiful today. Very nice. Well, thank you for taking time to join us. The top LinkedIn guru from Canada. Uh, we're honored to have you. But for those that do not know you, would you mind taking a couple seconds to just give us a, a quick thumbnail sketch of of who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. My company is Top Dog Social Media. Uh, we're a full-service social media agency that helps businesses, professionals, um, really enhance their social media presence to leverage the power of social media to build more leads, prospects, and clients. I'm best known for my love of LinkedIn. Uh -huh. <laughs> I do a lot of speaking and training on LinkedIn, a lot of training sales teams on how to use LinkedIn for lead generation. Um, but uh, you know, we do all social media. I, I'm just a big advocate of LinkedIn because of the business nature of it versus, you know, you know how people talking about what they ate for lunch on LinkedIn, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's much more serious. Right. And so it's not as fun, but it produces a lot better results. Produces better results for who? Because I, I'm finding, uh, I've had a couple of folks I've interviewed that, uh, that specialize on LinkedIn, but you're in the minority. Um, it, it, is it because things are quote unquote more fun talking about your food or are people just not figured out the business side of social media? I mean, what's, what's going on there? Yeah. Great question, Wes. You know, it really comes down to, uh, you know, what platform is best for any given business depends upon their business, their industry, who their target market is. And social media has been uh, a big challenge for most you know, most are overwhelmed with it. They don't understand how to actually use it. And those who understand how to use it then complain that they're not getting an ROI from it. Right. LinkedIn 
uh, has been shown to be 277% more effective for lead generation than Facebook or Twitter. And that's given that most people are using it incorrectly. So one of the things I do is teach people, you know, the right ways of using it, best practices, LinkedIn etiquette, uh, you know, how to set up a great profile, but mostly how to move that forward into a lead generation plan, because that's one of the things that's missing for most people with their social media. They think social media is posting to Facebook and Twitter, and then they wonder why they're not getting business from it. Or even with LinkedIn, I have so many people who've said to me, you know, Melanie, I've had a profile for like four years. I've never got any business from it. Right. What have you done with your profile over the last four years? You know, nothing. (laughs) Right. So it's really about understanding, you know, what you can do and then and implementing a, uh, a, you know, a lead generation plan around that to actually produce results. So where do you get this number? 277%. That is quite precise. You know, I have heard that up to 79% of statistics are made up on the, on the fly. <laughs> um, that was a study done, done by HubSpot. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of information out there about, you know, LinkedIn specifically for lead gen. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, it just makes sense because it is the only business social network out there. But it's not ideally suited for everybody. So, you know, there are some people when they come to me and say, you know, Melanie, I really want your help with LinkedIn. They'll basically say, well, tell me about your business. Who's your ideal clients? You know, what do you do? I'll be like, you know what, LinkedIn's not right for you. Right. So it's not right for everybody, but it's definitely right for anybody in the B2B space. So any business that's servicing other businesses, it's great for professional service providers. Of course, anybody in marketing or in sales, uh, you know, it, one of the things that really kind of got LinkedIn going initially was it became this job site and recruiter site, right? So it, it still has a little bit of that, uh, stigma attached to it that people think it's a place that should just go get jobs and they're like well i don't need to be on linkedin because i'm not looking for a job right. only okay i'm going to throw another stat at you here Wes. only 16 percent of the people using linkedin that got this stat from linkedin are actually using it for finding a job or recruiting okay the rest of it are using it for business reasons so um you know it's really about understanding that most people are not actually using it for that and, you know, kind of getting away from that, that stigma that it originally had. And LinkedIn's done a lot of work over the last, mostly over the last year to really start to become more of a content marketing platform. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's great for sales professionals. I teach a lot of sales teams on how to use it for LinkedIn, uh, for lead generation, using social selling practices and so forth. Can you give us some examples of those? I mean, are, are you advising people? I mean, when, when you look at this 277%, is it because somebody has a stellar looking LinkedIn profile, like it's SEO optimized and, and people are finding them? Or are you talking about paying like for the premium uh, levels or even buying ads on LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm not talking about any of those uh, in terms of, you know, you don't need to buy ads and you don't need a premium account. You know, a premium account definitely serves some people, and it really depends upon how active they're going to get on LinkedIn, how much additional advanced search criteria they want. So, for example, if you're, you know, working for a company that uh, services, you know, mostly Fortune 500 companies, right. and you want to dial your advanced search down to, you know, only Fortune 500 companies or only Fortune 100, that's a premium. So, you know, for those people, it makes sense. For the vast majority of the people that are using LinkedIn, a free account works. Okay. Ads, uh, ads only, you know, work to drive more traffic to one's company page. And this is a big question that I always get asked too. Well, what about a company page? You know, should I be, should I be spending more time on that or my personal profile? And my response is always, people want to deal with people, not logos. Mm-hmm. So your results come through. Your, the relationships that you build via LinkedIn through a personal profile. And so in my book, The LinkedIn Code, what I've basically done is documented the entire process of you know what you need to do to start using LinkedIn as a lead generation platform from laying the foundation for your success with LinkedIn with a great profile. It absolutely does start with that. You need to look good. <clears throat> you need to look professional. Uh, if your profile is optimized well, you can you know potentially get some opportunities that just come your way organically. And then, what are the best practices? What are you know the, the unspoken etiquette rules on, on LinkedIn? And each social network has their own set of you know what those rules are in terms of you know best practices and the things that people aren't saying that you you know shouldn't do, but 
we know they shouldn't do. <laughs> are you or, saying are you saying I should take my cat out of my profile photo? Absolutely I am. Oh, but they're so cute. <laughs> But, but, but actually, I borrowed the cats. They're not really my cats. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, and then moving forward to, okay, so if you're going to connect with new people, you know, this is a mistake that most people make. They'll connect with new people and then they'll do nothing. Right. Right. So it's like, well, why isn't LinkedIn generating any business for me? It's because you haven't done anything. So if somebody's connecting with you or you're connecting with somebody, what are you going to do to move that relationship forward and build that relationship? And one of the things I talk about is, you know, creating a welcome message, something that you send them right off the bat that says, Hey, you know, thanks so much for connecting with me. And, you know, I noticed that you do X, Y, Z, and and I have this, you know, great um, special report that I found or I wrote that I think you find very beneficial because of X, Y, Z, you know, and send them something that gets conversation going, or maybe just ask them a question or whatever that is. And so that's the next step is, you know, figuring out what kind of value you can add to new connections, create a plan to move those relationships forward and ultimately move those relationships offline because that's where you convert a prospect to a client. And that's the biggest mistake that people make with social media is they keep everything online and they never move anything forward. So, all right. So you saying, um, I know running LinkedIn groups, there are templates, uh, and I use that. I run a private group, uh, and the template goes out automatically when they request to join, and there's another template that goes out once they are approved or even if they're declined. Um, but there aren't templates for private, like one-on-one. So are you saying, like, just have that able to cut and paste uh, from a Word document or something just so it's at their fingertips? Yeah, exactly. So part of the lead generation plan is to create some specific messages that really work with uh, the specific, uh, you know, target audience that you're looking to connect with. And yeah, you can literally copy and paste those, but I always recommend, you know, adding one additional line of personalization right? so that it's not just 100% a template. Right. But at least you're not writing that from scratch every time. No, I mean, what you want to do is create a really systematic process that can be duplicated and replicated really, really quickly. Okay, Melly, so you saying that people should just accept the recommendations that LinkedIn says, hey, you should connect, uh, or should we be more strategic, more tactical, you know, more surgical in our searches? Right, great question. So, you know, LinkedIn will display at the top, right? It says, you know, people you may know. Uh, and so if you know those people, sure, go ahead and connect. Or if you see somebody who, you know, could be an ideal prospect, go ahead and connect. But I definitely, uh, you know, I definitely suggest a more strategic approach in that you're really seeking out people that, uh, you know, are people that you want to connect with because they could be ideal prospects. And you can do that via, you know, LinkedIn advanced search, doing searches. One of the best ways to do that is via LinkedIn groups. So join LinkedIn groups that are specific to who your target audience is. And now you've got access to all the members of that group. So that's one of the best ways to do it. Uh, however, you know, part of, I'm a big believer in quality over quantity in terms of your connections. You want to find the right connections, the ones that, uh, you know, are ideal for either strategic alliances or, you know, ideal prospects or whatever that is. But there is a little tiny bit of a numbers game on LinkedIn too, right? Because you will only show up in somebody's search results or they'll only show up in your search results as you're doing searches if you're part of their first, second, third degree network or a member of the same group. And that's why joining groups is really important. But you can only join 50 groups, right? That's right. So be strategic about that as well, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. One of the formulas that I suggest when people are choosing groups, because the you know big mistake that people make is they join all their industry-specific groups. So, for example, if they're a financial advisor, they join all these financial advising groups. Or if they're a real estate agent, they join all the real estate groups. And what you want to do is you want to join the groups where your ideal target uh, audience is. Right. So, you know. I would say, you know, 10% of the groups that you join can be groups that are related to your industry. Right. So you're staying up to date on industry trends and what's going on and your competitors and your peers and colleagues and so forth. 10% of the groups can be groups that are personal interest groups, things you want to learn more about. You want to learn more about sales or business development or marketing or social media or LinkedIn, join groups that are related that are specific to that. And then the vast majority, 80 plus percent, should be specific groups that hold your target audience in it. Gotcha. So, 
I mean, I like what you're saying on, you know, have a template or something you can send. So I have a free report. I mean, I do that like in my private group. Uh, and I don't do that, though, with the individuals. Um, so I'm guilty there. Uh, but it, is it working? I mean, are people – are we getting pitched to too much? Cause I know, like, on Twitter, there's all these autoresponders. And, I mean, I ignore every single one of them because as soon as you follow or whatever, like, hey, get this, check this. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, oh, exactly, yeah. No, no question about it. And that's where the personalization comes in. Yeah. And that's where, you know, having the right message is so important because it could just totally be overlooked. But if you're personalizing it, they know that, hey, LinkedIn doesn't have an autoresponder sequence. Right. That this is, you know, a one-off kind of message being sent if it's got your name in there. And then um, and then is the, is the message or the offer that you're offering of true value to them? If it's not, then there's a problem there, obviously. Right. Uh, and it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to send something like that on the first, very first message. It could just be getting to know that person. So I, I feel like I'm getting a lot more email blasts. Is, is that because we can email, like, to anybody in our group or or just private connections as a blast? I feel like it's it's getting more, more spammy. Okay, so you, when you're saying email blast, you're talking about the LinkedIn messaging. LinkedIn messaging, right. Yeah, and are you finding that you're getting that... Uh, are they ever personalized to you or is, are you thinking that it's like a 50, they've sent it out to 50 people at one time? Uh, let me, I'll pull up right now. I feel like some are personalized, but a lot of them are not. I just feel like it's a, it's a blast. Right. Um, yeah. And so can, can we email 50 at a time? Well, like, so here's yeah. one, you know, dear friend. And so this, <laughs> this is a blast. Okay. Well, exactly. You know, that's the most, terrible way to start a, a message off to your friend because you clearly know in the very first line that they haven't personalized it and they've sent it out to everybody. Right. So immediately that gets on your radar as, okay, this is spam. Right. So, you know, taking that, one of the things that I never teach, Wes, is too many shortcuts. I help people create a very systematic. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I yeah. thought you were the get rich quick lady. We got to <laughs> end this. Who's your agent? We got... My people got to talk to your people. I want it get rich quick. <laughs> I mean, uh, I actually, I do actually help people create a very systemized plan where they can literally, you know, for a lot, a lot of time, copy and paste with adding that one line of personalization. But the one thing that you know, the one thing that's so important is even just addressing somebody by their name. Right. Like if you're not going to personalize anything but add their name in there, at least they know it was sent to them only. You know. And so, so taking that two second, five second, or fifteen se- second shortcut basically wastes your time because you're getting no results from it. Yeah, I mean, I, I ignore it. And but what's the deal? I have not done a blast through LinkedIn. Does it let us email what fifty people at a time? Yeah, you, there's a way to message up to fifty people at one time. Okay. See, I don't even learn the bad habits. You know, I'm, I'm already you and I are of the same mind. I don't even look for those shortcuts. <laughs> Uh, but having a private group is nice because it lets me send one blast, and it's not personalized, but at least it comes from the group. Yeah. You know, once a week, I can send to everybody, and it's up to like 5,500 members, so that's that's kind of fun. Yeah, having your own group is a wonderful idea because of that feature, because you can stay in touch with your group via you know a weekly announcement, so you can be sharing stuff with them on, you know once a week or once a month, whatever that is that you do. And, uh, of course, you know, you're, it's really important to control that group and make sure that that group stays free of spam and crap and all that because then, you know, you just have a much higher quality group. But what an amazing way to have a targeted audience that almost becomes part of your email list. Right. So just the same way that you email people on your email list, you can message people via the announcement function as an owner of a group. Right. And and I, I actually do that when they when they request to join, it sends them a templated email, but it sends them a link to a landing page where I have an Infusionsoft web form. So they have I say you know tell me a little more about you. So I'm getting them offline or they're still online, but they're out of LinkedIn in my database. So I then can message them more if I want to, right. um, you know by by getting them into a separate database. Exactly. And that's one of the things that everybody should be thinking about when they're thinking about social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, you know, 
you shouldn't be selling on social media. It doesn't work. You want to, in LinkedIn specifically, you want to move that relationship offline. Unless of course you're selling, you know, a $20 book or low priced course or something like that. That's different, but I'm talking about higher price, you know, services or products. Usually that has to happen with a conversation. But the other great way to, you know, set that up is through email marketing. And so when I use social media for myself and my clients, I'm using Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, everything to grow my email database so that when I do, and I, what I, I nurture that database, I provide valuable content to them, you know, every week. But when I want to launch a, you know, a new course or something like that, like for example, I'm, you know, launching my new book, the LinkedIn code, of course, my entire email database is going to get an email about that. So it's a wonderful opportunity to, you know, avoid pitching and selling on social media Save that for email as long as you're providing regular value as well so that they're not kind of blocking you thinking, oh, all this person does is sell me or pitches me stuff. Right. you got to provide value so that when that promotional email comes in, they're, they're open to reading that. Um, all right. So I'm sitting here looking at LinkedIn. I, I know there's more coming with, with people being able to uh, provide more content. Uh, do, do you know much about that yet? Is there a way to, to kind of get picked or get – get highlighted, you know, if you will, or are we still kind of waiting for this to expand and be offered to everybody? Yeah. So that you're referring to the LinkedIn publisher uh, feature, right? And that's a relatively new feature that in in that it's open to the public where it used to be just for the influencer network. So the CEOs and celebrities and whatnot, they were publishing content from them. Now they've opened it up to everybody uh, it isn't an automatic feature yet. Uh, maybe at some point in time, it'll just be like an automatic feature in your profile. Uh, right now, you just have to apply and you just go to, you know, uh, Google LinkedIn publisher and find the link and it'll just say, you know, add, join the wait list or whatever. And within a week, I was given access to it. Okay. So how does that work? Because I could have sworn I did that. <laughs> Do it again. I could have swore I did it too. Uh-huh. And- happened and then I went I was like did I do that or not (laughs) and I did it again and within one week I had it so maybe I don't know but yeah and so basically what it is 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 just like you would blog on your own you know website or blog you can publish articles the exact same way and they go right into the LinkedIn platform so the value of that is you know LinkedIn's got a larger um, you know network of, of potential eyes on that content right um, what, what do you know about this LinkedIn Pulse app? Uh, are you using that? Yeah, so LinkedIn Pulse is just like a news uh, feature, right? So it used to be called LinkedIn um, Today, and then they, they bought Pulse. Okay. And so they've transitioned it from LinkedIn Today to LinkedIn Pulse. And basically, yeah, it's an intuitive uh, platform that allows LinkedIn to suggest content to you based on the content that's in your profile. Okay. So again, for example, let me use the financial advisor uh, example. If you were a financial advisor and you know you had all this information about financial advising in your profile, they probably recommend a lot of financial type blogs and articles and stuff like that. So, so it just intuitively knows. Okay. So it's you know I have the LinkedIn app on my iPhone. So is that is that different? Like when I as soon as I log in, the very top thing says top stories for you. Right. Right. It's got that little blue button. It's it is pulse. So do I do I need to subscribe with my cell you phone need, number or just use the app? You don't need to do anything at all. It's okay. on the desktop okay. version, it's on the iPad ver- iPod and the iPhone version, it's everywhere. Right, okay. It's basically as soon as you go to your home on your navigation, it's there. It's right. just a built-in feature. But yeah, but I see they've got introducing the LinkedIn Pulse app, you know, so they're wanting you to opt in. But it, like I said, it seems like I already have it. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, yeah. I, you know what? I've never clicked on that button because I one of the things I actually don't recommend using uh, apps like iPhone apps or iPad apps too much for LinkedIn. The, okay. problem, the reason for that, it's okay to check stuff you know, on LinkedIn, but you don't want to start sending connection requests out uh, via the apps because they don't allow you to personalize your message. And LinkedIn etiquette rule number one, 
is always personalize your connection request messages. Ah, okay. Don't send the default, especially, especially if you're connecting with somebody you don't know. You want to tell them why you want to connect with them so that it gives them a reason to actually want to accept. Otherwise, what can happen is LinkedIn, if they hit the report spam or I don't know button, right. LinkedIn is going to restrict your account after a certain number of those. Right. And you'll never be able to send a connection request to another person unless you have their email address. Well, I, over the years, I've been, it's kind of like a Google slap. I've had the LinkedIn slap at least twice. Uh, I used to be really aggressive with it years ago. I've been on LinkedIn a long time. I got some emails like I was in some 1% club or something, like early adopters. Uh, so I, I have calmed down there. But I do, I don't know, I, can, I have to confess, I do use the mobile apps. Like if it says I know somebody or like if I do know them, like, oh, yeah, they finally popped up. I'll, I'll hit that little plus because it's simple. And I don't, so far I've been safe, but yeah, if you really, if you know somebody really well, not a big deal. Right. But if you're trying to like, for example, I was speaking at an event uh, a, a few weeks ago and I was, uh, you know, sharing, obviously I was speaking on, on LinkedIn and I basically said, you know, anybody who'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, you're welcome to Right. just make sure that you send me a personalized note. Let me know that you, you saw me speak here and that way I'll accept it. Otherwise, you know, I'm becoming a little bit more selective about who I accept. And if I get a generic message, a lot of times I don't accept them. So I had uh, a few people actually send me a message. They had sent me a connection request, generic. And then immediately afterwards sent me another one saying, oh, my gosh, Melanie, I am so sorry. Uh, LinkedIn didn't allow me to personalize the message. And, you know, you know, so they sent another one through their desktop because they didn't realize that they weren't av- it wasn't available through their you know, iPhone or their iPad. Right. So if you're doing any kind of connecting with people, you want to do it through your desktop, and that way you can uh, personalize all the connection requests. Yeah, I always laugh when people say, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn, and I go find them, and they don't they don't have their, their contact info anywhere. And then, like, if we're not in a group or something, you know, and you want to say other, like, I don't have your email. Right. You know, I mean, do you recommend people put their email in their profile, like in the bottom or wherever, and to make it easy for people to copy that and select other? You, you know? can do that. However, um, I recently have learned that that's actually against LinkedIn's terms of service, and I don't know if they've recently changed that. I still have what I call a call to action at the bottom of mine. So, you know, I say to people, you know, if you want to learn more about this, 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 just email me at. Right. And when, you know, if LinkedIn lets me know that I can't do that, I'll change it. Right. <laughs> but for now, I'm getting away with it, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, so, yes, you can do that. However, here's a little trick for you. If you want to connect with somebody and you they're not a member of the same group, the option that I – uh, recommend somebody select is that we've done business together. And right. then I, su- I suggest that you, in your first sentence in the personalized uh, connection request message saying, I know we hadn't done business together be- before, but it was the only, it was the only option I could select. And here's why I want to connect with you. Gotcha. So that way you can still get bypass that. And, and you're not like offending them because they're like, what? we haven't done business together because you've started your message saying, I know we haven't done business together. It wasn't another relevant option. Yeah. And this is why I want to connect with you, you know? Um, do you find uh, – my experience has been people are pretty open, at least on LinkedIn, about connecting versus, you know, uh, other social media platforms. Maybe others are more personal. But, um, you know, as long as there's some very loose connection, I mean, people tend to accept. I mean, have you seen that? For the most part, that's true. However, there is still a certain degree of people that don't quite understand that, you know, it is a social network. It is a business social network. And the goal really should be to expand your business social network Mm -hmm. and treat it like it's their Facebook personal profile. And they're like, who is this person? Why are they wanting to connect with me? And they don't quite get it, that it makes sense. And it's a win-win to connect with other people because you're expanding your network. They're expanding their network. And, you know, regardless of whether they, you know, could potentially be an ideal client, there's still a win there if you're looking at using LinkedIn as a business building tool. If you're not, if you have no desire to increase your business, no desire to get additional clients, then fine, treat it like that. So how my birthday was, I don't know, a couple weeks, beginning of April. And um, 
a lot of people were sending me happy birthday. And, and like, I'm looking around. Where do we see that quickly and easily on LinkedIn? <laughs> yeah. So well, what, two thing, one of two things happen. One is uh, you LinkedIn sends an email uh, that says, you know, an update, uh, a network update that'll say, you know, these are the people in your network that are having birthdays today. These are the people that are having anniversaries. Uh, I'll jobs. probably turn that. I think I've turned all notifications off to anything in the whole wide world. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you're not getting that. You okay. can also see it on your contacts page and uh, under network. And then it'll show you like birthdays and, and different things that are going on. Yeah. Cause like when I log into Facebook in the morning, it's usually what I do. I'll post a little daily funny and then it says right there in the top, right birthdays. I just send a quick happy birthday to everybody. Uh, right. It's birthdays today. It, it doesn't seem to be as simple on LinkedIn. Am I just, am I just using the wrong button? No, you, uh, if you want to like get updates on, on what's going on in your network, you can go to, um, network in the navigation, then click on contacts and it'll, you know, let you know who's got a new job and mm-hmm. who's got, you know, what's going on and you can just kind of scroll through and. Yeah. Well, this shows like recent conversation, oh, I guess sort by, well, no filter. No, look above that. Yeah. Network contacts. Don't you see so-and-so's got a new job or whatever? No. Shows oh. recent conversations. Last name, first name, new. No, I don't want that. Filter by, connections only, company tag. Okay, well, typically right about that, okay. you'll have uh, three big boxes that will say, say congrats, say congrats, say happy birthday, whatever it is. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. There are two. Uh, okay, so this shows two people that have new jobs. Okay, yeah. So that's what's uh, going so on. So I just got to keep scrolling through this to see birthdays or whatever else. Right. Oh, see, that's, that's probably why I don't use it because it's like you got to scroll through to see what's new. It's like, you know what? Just show me the birthdays. <laughs> right, which they do do via that email. So uh, if you so shut turn on those notifications. Yeah, just for that anyways. Right. Yeah, that'd be smart. All right. Very nice. Uh, and so what, what's your idea on starting groups? Uh, should people start one right away, kind of claim their, their virtual space online? Uh, should they hold back a little bit, see what's going on in other groups? I only suggest starting a group if you're willing to put in the work that's involved. Now, if you're going to start a group and not do anything with it, then it's pointless. Okay. So, you know, there's work involved in a group, as you know, as a group owner, you need to be pop posting good content on a regular basis. You need to be moderating the group, making sure that there's no spam in it, um, inviting people to it, growing it. So a group is a lot of work and it's a work that's well worth it. Right. If, as long as you're prepared to do it. If you're not prepared to do it, you're going to have a crappy group and it's not going to produce any results and you're just going to waste your time. Right. So what else? What's some little tips and tricks? You know, I'm, I'm clicking through here. I don't know. Maybe I've taken it for granted after a while. <laughs> well, you know, it, I mean, you know, the key with LinkedIn is is understanding what your goals are, right? Being really clear on, okay, well, what do I, who do I want to connect with and why? And, you know, starting off that from, you know, the initial connection request to moving that relationship forward and ultimately moving it offline. But before one does anything like that, uh, the very beginning of my books talks all about, you know, laying the foundation for your success. Have a great profile. LinkedIn is no longer a job resume site, which means your profile shouldn't be a resume or your professional bio. It should be very client focused. Okay. So what you want to do is write a profile that speaks to the needs, wants, desires, problems of your ideal clients. It can have a little bit of information about you. Of course, it needs to have a little bit about you, but it needs to be much more client focused. Okay. The other thing is, you know, write in first person. People forget that LinkedIn's a social network, you know, because it's a business social network. It's still a social network. So you want to be social. And tell people what you want them to do. You know, the, the, having the call to action, you can have a great profile, but if you haven't told them what to do, whether it's, hey, feel free to reach out and connect with me, email me, phone me, whatever it is you want them to do, you know, nothing's going to happen. I want them to send me money. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. So what are you going <laughs> to give them for that? Can Sir? I have a link to my PayPal? <laughs> <laughs> or is that too bold? Yeah, a little bit. Just a little. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm the sailor. Bam, you buy right now. No, no. 
All right. See, y'all are too nice in Canada. See, in America, yeah, man, we just we just squeeze them. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. So I'll just I'll just, just give me one step to expand on the profile thing. So there's, okay. There's three steps that you want to achieve when you're writing your LinkedIn profile. The first one is you want to get found. So you want to figure out what are the key words that your clients are using when they're looking for what you you offer. Yep. Think of the words that they say to you when they're talking to you on the phone or the things that they might type into a search or whatever. Yep. Think of those words. Then you want to optimize your profile to get found. The second thing is you want to attract and engage your ideal clients. So does your profile really speak to them? Does it speak to who they are, what their problems are, what your solutions are? And then lastly, you know, do you stand out? We know that social media is noisy and LinkedIn is no different. So what are you going to do to stand out? One of the easiest ways to stand out is complete your profile. <laughs> you know, most people have nothing in their profile. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, then there's additional things. You should have a good headshot. You can add multimedia. You can add videos and stuff like that to it. But have a great profile. Then start reaching out and connecting with people. What do you think about those little images and stuff, check marks and stars in your name and whatever? Yeah, you want to write your profile in a manner that's reader-friendly. So LinkedIn doesn't allow you to use any formatting whatsoever. You can't bold anything. You can't italicize anything. You can't, you know, you know, add bullets through there. Uh, so it's nice when you create your, pro- you know, we don't read. If you read a, an article somewhere or you're looking at an article and it's like just all these big, long block paragraphs, we don't read them anymore. We scan. So you want to write your profile in a manner in which somebody can scan and see if there's anything in there for them. And that's why it's so important that it's very client focused because you, you want a scanner to identify immediately and resonate with something in your profile because you've spoken to them. You might identify them. So think of it as writing a blog post, you know, in a blog post, we're adding subheaders and lists and bullets and stuff like that. You can't do as much of that in LinkedIn, but you can add some bullets and some check marks and you can, you know, capitalize words you want to bring attention to. And you can add lots of white space and keep your paragraphs short and do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, so do you recommend like small business owners take the time to build a company profile on LinkedIn? It's ideal to have a company page because you, you know, you want to have your company page connected to your personal profile. So should every business have a company page? Absolutely. They should. Okay. But are you going to get results from it? Probably not. The only results you're going to probably get from your company page is if you run ads. Whereas in your personal profile, you can get a ton of results for free. You don't have to have an upgraded profile. You don't have to spend any money on ads because you can't through a personal profile anyways. And you can get some great results if you, you know, have, you know, if you're reaching out, connecting with people and building relationships and moving those relationships forward. So uh, when you have your company page on your profile, when you're filling out your experience section, all of a sudden you'll, your logo will show up and it'll be hyperlinked to your company page. And that's good. If somebody wants to learn more about you and your company, there's a place for them to go. So should you have one? Yes. Don't expect results from it. Right. I noticed like I've got Twitter connected to this and or my, my social media posting platform. So it's like updates go to my page. Um, but yeah, it shows impressions are very low. Uh, but have you done much with advertising on, on LinkedIn? Yeah, a little bit. You know, one of the key, one of the, the best features that LinkedIn added this past year was sponsored posts. So, you know, again, same thing with Facebook, you know, sponsored posts that are ideally created to fit your target market and, you know, are visual and, you know, you have the right, um, you know, information can be good. So sharing some really great content, you know, having some kind of a call to action in that content would be ideal too. So yeah, it can be very good. Um, The problem with LinkedIn ads in general is that, if you're, and I'm going to take sponsored posts out of the equation because sponsored posts can be really, really great. But if you're just running ads, like the stuff that shows up at the top or the sides or whatever, link, the self-service model on LinkedIn gives you the bottom of the barrel placement for ads. Okay. If you want to have great placement for ads, you actually have to do it through a LinkedIn rep. Oh. And you have a LinkedIn rep if you have a minimum ad spend of $10,000. Oh, so if you're going to run, um, want to run ads, run sponsored posts. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. $10,000. Minimum. And is that yeah. a month or a year? 
Uh, it's a, it's the a minimum ad spend. They recommend that that budget be used up within a few months. Mm. All right. Well, I'm not doing that anytime soon. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned a couple of things. You got a book coming out, some websites. Where can people find you and get all of your great knowledge? Where can they send you money? <laughs> I'm a giver. <laughs> uh, my website's topdogsocialmedia.com. I've got a blog on that website, and I blog regularly with amazing content about LinkedIn and, and other social networks as well. But I try to keep about 50% of my content to LinkedIn. Okay. And then 50% I cover, you know, social media marketing in general or, or different platforms, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, blogging, content marketing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, so topdogsocialmedia.com, great uh, resource site. Our blog was named top uh, 10 social media blogs worldwide by Social Media Examiner this year. Nice. So, yeah, so we've got a lot of great content. We spend a lot of time, you know, really working on uh, making sure that we're putting out some consistent good content. The second place to learn more is uh, the LinkedIn code.com. That's going to be a website dedicated to my book uh, that's coming out June 3rd. And uh, there will be information there. Well, there will be information probably on my top dog social media website too. I just haven't got around to doing that yet. Very nice. So is that website up yet or will it not go live until the book goes live? LinkedIn code.com. Yeah, it's, it's, it's live now. Oh, nice. It's not, it's not fully completed. But it's, uh, it's there with some information, uh, temporary stuff. All right. Now the pressure's on for you to complete it. Yes, absolutely. So are you going through a traditional publisher? Or are you self-publishing? Or what are you doing? No, I'm self-publishing. And the reason for that is, uh, well, there's a number of reasons. A, a traditional publisher, the, the time from you know, writing the book to a print is way too long for a social media book. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and secondly, uh, social media changes so often that I need to be able to do, you know, a second edition, third edition on the fly real quick when big changes come about. Yep. All right. I just signed up for your pre-launch. Send me the goodies. <laughs> okay. Good stuff. Very nice. Well, congratulations on top 10. Congratulations on the new book. Um, and so do you want people to reach you on LinkedIn? You want them to reach you on Twitter? What a... Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. It's just at Melanie Dodero. Uh, if you actually, if you just go to topdogsocialmedia.com, you'll find a, a handy little, uh, you know, the string of links to different social media sites. So you can choose, you know, your favorite to connect with me on, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever that is. Right. Um, and of course, anybody who wants to connect with me on LinkedIn, you're welcome to just personalize that connection request message. Just say, heard you through the sales whisperer. Exactly. Very nice. Uh, well, thank you for taking your time, and I uh, hope you enjoy the nice Canadian spring. Thank and, you. And uh, so you were, oh, heck, you were here in San Diego, what, a month or two ago for the? Yeah, uh, I was just there last month. For, oh, I missed uh, you. Were you there? I was there. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, that's what happens when you have 2,000 people there. You know, I have so many friends that uh, were there that I didn't even get a chance to bump into. I know. I, I stood in line for like an hour, and then I had to go eat, and I just couldn't see you. Oh, <laughs> no, actually, I think it was three hours. You just had this posse and then there was security and I, I don't know. It was just, it was terrible. How'd you get so famous? I'll <laughs> do LinkedIn. I'll do LinkedIn. All right. So everybody <laughs> listen to Melanie. So top dog, social media.com and the LinkedIn code.com get on the early bird notification list. Uh, so again, thanks a lot, Melanie. And, um, I look forward to meeting you at the next conference. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Wes. All right. Take care. Bye. There you have it. LinkedIn is 277% more effective for lead generation than Facebook or Twitter, according to HubSpot. Um, have a lead generation plan for social media. Have a plan for anything. When I talk about the seven daily sins of selling, number one is anti-ocleitis, meaning we shoot from the hip. Uh, and that just doesn't cut it. Once you begin planning your day, planning your processes, planning how you uh, approach people, uh, connect with them, set appointments, uh, reach decision makers, uh, ask for a decision, your sales will increase. I guarantee it. Uh, but like Melanie said, you know, LinkedIn is right for anybody in B2B, anybody in sales, anybody in marketing. Uh, you do not need a premium account. You don't have to buy ads to win on LinkedIn. 
Okay, narrow your search, use it widely, have a great looking profile, optimize that thing, use keywords uh, for your industry that you want to get found for, and it will work. You will get found. People will come to you, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, as far as joining groups, I thought that was great advice that she shared. You know, too many people join their own industry, uh, but go join groups where your prospects and clients are hanging out. That's how you get found. That's how you get warm introductions and stop making cold calls. Uh, so I thought that was great advice. Uh, we don't hear that too often uh, when it comes to LinkedIn. You know, maybe 10% is for your industry, maybe 10% for your interest groups. Uh, but, you know, quality trumps quantity. Even though you can join 50 groups, um, it may not make sense to join that many right off the bat. Uh, but certainly when you join, listen first. Then offer advice uh, when the time is right and certainly don't show up there and just start blabbing. You know, social media, first of all, is social. Treat it just like uh, going to a, a backyard barbecue at a neighbor's house. You don't show up there, start passing out your business cards uh, and talking shop with everybody. You know, you grab a beer, you grab a hot dog, uh, chit chat, you know, pay somebody a compliment, ask them what they do how long they live in the area, yada, yada, get to know one another. Uh, then maybe business will come up or at the end say, Hey, you know, I like uh, what you're doing. Um, would love to learn more. Would it be all right if I connect with you next week um, when we're back at the office? That's how you treat it online, just like you would in person. So uh, please give Melanie a shout out on Twitter. Uh, you can find the show notes at the saleswhisperer.com slash session 62. If you need help growing your sales, please visit 30 day sales growth.com enter promo code podcast uh, and save 30% on that program. As always, I thank you for listening and remember to sell different. Mm-hmm.